In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the great and some of the not so great things about the OnePlus 10 Pro. Now, this is not a full review video, but we do have a full written review, which you can check out in the description. First up, the display. It's about what you would expect on a high-end OnePlus device at this point. In fact, it appears to be roughly the same panel as the one found on the 9 Pro, with a couple of small differences. It's a bright, sharp, colorful, buttery smooth display with slightly curved edges, so it is nice to look at and use. And something definitely worth mentioning is they moved the in-display fingerprint scanner back up to a much better spot than where it was on the 9 Pro. I don't know what that was all about, but it's back and we're thankful for that. The overall hardware of the phone is nice, as slippery as it is, it's made with very nice feeling and premium materials, it's slim, and the phone is comfortable to hang on to and use. The curvature makes for something I prefer holding over the S22 Ultra and the Pixel 6 Pro. The haptics are nice and solid as well, they're better than they were on the 9 Pro, that's for sure, and the alert slider is always nice to have. The 10 Pro is a fast device, benchmarks and throttling stuff aside, we haven't really noticed anything to worry about and honestly, as you should expect, everything you would put a phone through, it'll crush it. Everything from the simplest of tasks to multitasking to gaming, the 10 Pro with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip runs fast and smooth. Battery life is good too, in both mine and Ryan's experience, he put together our written review, we got good results. The 5000 mAh battery packed into this phone will be more than enough for pretty much every use case, whether you're a light to moderate user or an all day power user. In our use, we were getting over 6 hours of screen on time and depending on the usage we'd get more, and with the lightest, most basic use, this actually turned into kind of a two-day phone, and while it would be nice, very nice, to be able to use 85 watt fast charging here in the US, 65 watt fast charging is still blazing fast, and it does come in clutch when you need a quick charge right away. While the 10 Pro cameras may not be the absolute best on the market, there are a handful of features worth mentioning, some of which even the Pixel doesn't have. Now, When it comes to taking photos, you're looking at RAW Plus and 10-bit capture capability, which is great if you're looking to dive into post-processing and editing. There's a Pro Movie Mode, which includes log support, again, great for those that really want full flexibility when it comes to added quality and the ability to grade footage, and among other things, there's a neat dual video mode and the ultra-wide-angle lens sports a 100 and 50 degree field of view. It is nice to see OnePlus adding functionality to the camera experience. On the other side of the spectrum, Oxygen OS isn't what it used to be, and while it does have a good amount of features and customization, which I'm sure a lot of people will like, we're just not the biggest fans of the Oxygen slash ColorOS hybrid thingy as a whole, to be completely honest. Ryan does get into further detail as to why in our written review, but it is pretty clear that OnePlus hasn't been moving in a favorable direction with their OS. On top of this, when it comes to software updates, OnePlus does not have the greatest track record, and as for commitments for future updates, OnePlus promises only three major OS updates and four years of security patches, which for a near thousand dollar phone just misses the mark. Looking at the hardware again, a couple of things do stick out. For one, the unlocked model of the 10 Pro does not have an official IP rating, while the T-Mobile model does. Now, Some of you may not care about this, and OnePlus did say that the unlocked model is still water resistant, uh, but it's strange for them to go back to this method that they went to in the past. There are other interesting things going on with the hardware here, like the lack of a second SIM slot for the model sold in the US, which is something I'm sure a lot of users found to be useful. And with the 10 Pro, 5G on AT&T is just not a thing. It'll work with T-Mobile 5G, and it just got certification for 5G on Verizon's network, but tough luck for those looking to get 5G on AT&T. Now, whether it's a software or a hardware issue, RAM management isn't up to snuff either. Both myself and Ryan experienced recently used applications getting pushed out of memory way too prematurely. And on top of that, delayed notifications are still a thing here as well. Again, not very pro of the 10 Pro, and it pushes user experience further behind what it really should be by now. Unfortunately, the cameras being mentioned on this side of the fence has been a theme with OnePlus devices throughout the years. Now, the cameras on their own are not bad. They're actually very solid. There's a lot to like here, and honestly, these will be more than enough for most people. But when you start comparing them to what competitors have to offer, then things get put under the microscope. Ryan pointed out how unpredictable results can be, among other things. And even simple things like 4K video recording on the front-facing camera and QR code reading still aren't here. It's pretty unfortunate and kind of embarrassing for a phone in this price range. 
Let us know your thoughts on the OnePlus 10 Pro. Make sure you check out our full written review linked below. Subscribe to the Android Police channel if you're new. It's been Zach. I'll talk to you later, and thanks for watching.